This video is sponsored by NordVPN. We all know that plastic bags suck for the environment and that we should be using far more eco-friendly paper or cotton totes, right? Well, that's not necessarily the case. So we want to work out how to make the most eco-friendly bag possible, but before we can do that, we should probably find out how bad are bags? So we're going to compare the three most popular types of carrier or grocery bags, plastic, paper, and cotton. And it's actually possible to calculate how bad a bag is for the environment. You just need to compare three variables. It's carbon footprint, reusability, and degradability. So first, let's take a look at the carbon footprint of each of these bags. And you might think that plastic bags being churned out en masse in some factory are the obvious losers in this category. But surprisingly, it's actually the opposite. Although people usually think that paper is a far more planet-loving choice, making a paper bag is actually a super energy-intensive process. Making virgin paper bags can be responsible for producing around 2.5 to 5 kilograms of CO2. Of course, there may be a recycled paper option, but even that still uses around half the amount of energy. Comparing that to the good old cotton tote, the bags that companies so often use to showcase their green credentials, printing their logo with Save the Bees written underneath, these are actually the biggest CO2 producers, as growing cotton demands a load of energy and water. So a single bag can make around 270 kilograms of CO2. Then looking at plastic bags, and while petroleum is taken from the ground and melted at high heats, you're only looking at around one to one and a half kilograms of CO2 per bag. However, it's of course not just about the carbon footprint. Its ability to be used again and again while you're out shopping plays a massive factor. Essentially, you just need to divide the carbon footprint by the number of times that you can reuse it to calculate if it's worth it. Paper bags don't perform great here as they're super prone to tearing depending on what you put in them. Plus, as soon as it's raining, you're likely to be holding a big old lump of papier mache in your hands. Cotton totes are of course nailing it in this department as you can use them again and again. You just have to make sure that you're using it a few hundred times to make it worthwhile. Those thin plastic bags you get aren't much better than the paper ones and are only likely to be used once, maybe twice, before being thrown out or at best being used as a bin liner. However, the thicker reusable plastic bags that are far more common these days are great for reusing, as long as you remember to bring them with you. And they're much sturdier than their single-use counterparts. Moving on to degradability, this is of course where plastic is just the worst. When chucked into landfill, those bags can hang around for centuries, whereas cotton and paper bags can degrade in months. They will still rot and emit CO2 and methane, but it's still better than the plastic option. And hopefully, if it's a good landfill site, most of those emissions will get captured. Recycling is also an option, but as mentioned, recycled paper still produces a fairly hefty amount of CO2, and both plastic bags and cotton totes can still be fairly tricky to break down and process. And many countries can't even do this at the moment. So, what do we think overall? The what? Oh, let's just get back in the workshop. The one that scores best then, it can be argued, is that thicker reusable plastic bag. It produces less CO2 to make, and it can be used again and again. And while it is awful in terms of degradation, the fact that it is a lot sturdier means that it shouldn't really have to end up going to landfill. But what happens if one of those bags do get a hole in, or the handle snaps, or they tear? Then surely they are destined for landfill, right? Not necessarily. So we want to take the best bag option and upgrade it slightly so that if it gets broken, it can be repaired and used again, or it can be broken down to form part of a super bag. This should remove the main downside of plastic bags, their degradability, as by making them completely circular, they should never have to go to landfill. So our plan is to take these either broken reusable bags or single use carrier bags and fuse them together using heat. And this makes a really strong and durable material. Now we've actually done this a couple of times before using an iron and this works great because you can add heat and pressure. The first time we did it, we made these little wallets. The second time we made a larger piece of furniture, but because we were using something as small as this, it took forever to do. So we figured we're gonna try using this t-shirt press because it's got the same surface area as about 10 irons and it should give us a nice constant pressure pushing down to fuse these bags together. So these reusable bags will be absolutely fine, but as you can see, most of the handles are broken off, some have got holes in them. So we're gonna cut these up into usable material. Same thing with the single use bags. These are probably gonna be just used as bin liners unless we do something with them. So we're gonna cut the sides open and lay them out flat. And that way we get a little bit more control as to how many layers we build up. Because the base tends to be made up of a couple of different layers, if we melted them flat, all of that material would bundle up together and it would make it really hard to kind of get a nice even thickness. But that works much better.
Now this step's completely optional. If you want to think about what your bag is going to look like on the outside, you can cut out any words or motifs or designs out of any of the bags you find and you can use that to put on the top layer of your bag and that way it gives you a little bit of a design and a little message to say on the outside. We've lined the base of the t-shirt press with baking paper, and that will stop any of the bags sticking to the metal plates. And then we're just gonna simply start layering stuff up. So we're gonna go for three to four layers. And because we wanna make this a wide sheet and a long sheet, so we can cut our template out of it, we're gonna try and kind of overlap things so we can move it around and press it multiple times. And we put a piece of our Teflon baking paper on the top, sliding it into place. And we're gonna pop it down for about 20 seconds. Nice thing about working with plastic bags and heat is that if it feels a bit thin, you can just add more layers and keep pressing it. It's actually working really well. We've noticed we're getting a tiny bit of delamination in a couple of areas. So we think that might be the temperature of the press. We were going with 140, just as a guess. So we've knocked up to 180. Apparently that's about the top temperature that the iron used to get to when we were using that technique. We're gonna try repressing this and hopefully that works. This is actually working really nicely. Essentially, we're just gonna keep repeating the same process over and over again, adding a bit more material to where any thin spots are and just kind of tidying up the whole sheet until we get something a little bit bigger. So we're aiming for something that's about a meter by around 500. And that will give us a nice amount of material to make our tote bag from. But more than anything, we wanna make sure that this sheet is gonna be super durable and super secure. And whilst we're here showing you how you can make your shopping bags as sturdy and secure as possible for your next shopping trip, conveniently, the sponsor of today's video is all about helping you feel secure when you're online. Well, handy. NordVPN can keep you safe in a whole bunch of ways while you're scrolling through the web. For example, let's say you're out shopping and you want to stop for a coffee at your local cafe. You connect to what you think is the cafe's free Wi-Fi network, but it's been set up by a hacker and you're getting spied on the whole time you're there. So while you're sitting there, sipping on your coffee, browsing away, criminals might be harvesting any sensitive data you could be entering. Fortunately, with NordVPN, you can encrypt your online traffic at all times to keep those pesky fingers out. Or perhaps you're just working away and you notice an email comes in that seems legitimate and it's asking you to take some sort of immediate and urgent action. And kindly, it even provides you with a helpful link for you to log in and solve the problem. So you trustingly continue and enter your password, but now it's too late and the hackers have full access to your account. Fortunately, NordVPN has a threat protection feature which can recognize any malicious links and warn you about any dodgy looking websites. NordVPN are kindly offering all of you guys an exclusive deal. So if you're interested, check out the link in the description. Plus you even get a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you decide it's not for you, then you've got nothing to worry about. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. I think we've just about got enough plastic to work with. Let's start on those handles. So because we cut all those handle materials off earlier on, we thought it would be fitting to make some handles out of handles to go with the bag that we've made out of bags. But these on their own are already prone to breaking. We know that they're a bit rubbish. So we're gonna try and encase it something a bit bigger to make it stronger. And we thought what's gonna be better than a bin bag. We get loads of plastic donations coming to us in bags like this. And often this knot at the top is so tight, it's really hard to open. So we have to rip the bag to get the plastic out. This hole obviously makes this bag kind of useless. It's not even gonna work as a bin bag anymore, but we thought there might be a way we can use it for a project like this. Now we've got this big bit of bag opened up into a big flat sheet. We're gonna to manage to hide this hole that we made earlier on inside because we're gonna fold this up multiple times. And then we're gonna fold the handles in and melt it all together. And that will hopefully end up with a much stronger handle.
It's a good idea to put something heavy on top of the plastic after you've taken the heat away because the thin bin bag material can tend to shrink a lot and that just stops it from happening quite so bad. Now we can start laying our filler material in and this is all just the bits of handle that came off. If any of them don't sit flat, then what you can do is just pop them in the press for a couple of seconds and that will help them sit flat while you're assembling it all together. So this is a case of folding it all together and then we're gonna press it in its folded state and that should fuse it all together nicely, ready for our handle. That gives us a nice, tough handle material, much stronger than the handles on the old bags. And now all we're gonna do is trim all the excess off. Before, when we did this with the iron, every time we cut it, we had to reseal the edges, but the T-shirt press has done such a good job, I don't think we're gonna to have to do that for this one. And because we're going for two handles, we're gonna just cut this down the middle. We think a thinner handle is gonna be a little bit more comfortable than this really wide one, but if you like the wide one, you can just make another one of these. Any off cuts that you have, you can quite easily keep these aside. We have a big old box with the keep down here. We chuck all our bits and pieces in. These work great for filling in other projects and that way nothing gets chucked out. So last thing to do before we make this into a bag is to cut two shapes out of this so we can make the two bag pieces. To keep it easy, we're just gonna use our cutting mat. We're gonna put it on, cut around that, and that will give us our two rectangles of 45 by 60 centimeters, and then we can get it all sewn up. Right, so now all of that plastic is ready to go. We could go at it with the old needle and thread, but that does take a very long time. And if you've seen any of our plastic bag videos before, you'll know that we do have an upholsterer pretty much next door to us. So I'm thinking, let's take it over to Kev and let him work his magic. And not only, Kev's actually just moved workshops and now he's on the other side of the farm. So we've got a bit of a walk. Don't really know what to talk about here, to be honest. Tell him about the Brotherhood. Oh, the Brotherhood? <laughs> that wasn't planned. <laughs> You can join the Brotherhood. You uh, sign up, you'll get early access to our videos, a bit of bonus content, hang out with us on Zoom. Lucky okay. you. <laughs> Lucky you. But yeah, check it out. No pressure, but if you fancy it, you know, link in the description. Kev was, of course, delighted to see us at his new workshop. And no, we definitely didn't have to edit out him swearing at us before letting us in. So we showed him our material and he got to work. He started by hemming the tops of each bag before we decided how we wanted to lay out the handles. We went for this railroad tote style where the straps are stitched along the full length of the bag. We thought this would add a nice amount of strength to the handles as well as just look cool by offering up a nice colour contrast. Kev then stitched these on either side of the handle and added a bit of extra reinforcement at the top where most of the strain would be. Next, both of the panels were laid on top of each other face to face so that Kev could sew all the way around the outside of the bag. Not including the top, of course, as ideally we wanted to be able to put stuff inside the bag. We then measured out three and a half inch squares in each of the bottom corners and cut these out. These edges were then pitched together and sewn to make the bottom of the bag nice and square. The final thing to do was flip this inside out, and while Kev's outward appearance didn't really exude confidence, it could not have worked more perfectly. So it's safe to say he absolutely nailed it. Cheers, Kev, you legend. So there you have it, one bag made out of bags. I'm not gonna lie, when we went into this, we kind of thought we'd make a bag, it would be a cool proof of concept that we'd probably just go back to using the regular plastic reusable bags. But this is actually a really cool bag. It's, it's almost sort of tarp-like now, so it's a super durable one. So it is definitely getting a lot of use. Now it's usually this part of the video, me and Matt have a little Bit of on-screen banter between us as we say our big thank yous, but he's actually on holiday this week, so it's just me. If I can, I might try and pop him on screen now just to 
you know, make it feel like we're all back together again for the end of the video. But otherwise, it's a massive thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. It's a huge thank you to the Brotherhood for always being there for us and being stunningly wonderful. And a massive thank you to you guys for watching the video. Have a good one, and we'll see you on the next one.